Recently, I posted a video on my YouTube channel regarding understanding Satan's tactics, tactics to get us away from God. Then I watched a video on a lovely influencer who went back to God after backsliding for years. Her stories echoes mine in a lot of ways, resonating with certain words she uttered and it got me thinking about conversation between Jesus and Peter, then God and Satan and Satan tempting Jesus in the wilderness. All this conversation links back to the understanding, the stupidity, arrogance and ignorance of Satan. How can a creation of God try to exalt itself above God, got kicked out of heaven and sworn to a life of vengeance and deceit? Satan hates the things of God, yet requires God's permission to sift people, rendering him powerless in the process. Because for you to ask permission from God, it means you're, you're just as useless and powerless. A good news to us that we have authority over Satan and his entities and his demonic entities due to Jesus defeating death and taking the keys of hell when he died on the cross. As humans, we come, we come against trials and tribulations by our own doings and Satan trying us. Prior to Satan asking Jesus' permission to sift Peter, which is in Matthew 6, 16, 18, invites us into the conversation of Jesus telling Peter that he is the rock that Jesus will build his church on. And we see the evidence of Jesus', Jesus words in Acts 2, 14 to 47 and Acts 10, 1 to 48 when Peter brought the gospel to the Gentiles. Before Jesus' words could occur, we saw that Peter denied Jesus three times before the rooster crowed, in a way making Satan happy, thinking he had successfully done something. However, Jesus mentioned that he has prayed for Peter that his faith won't fail in Luke 22, 31-32, which brought Peter to repentance after realizing what he had done. The same way we come to realization of the lies the enemy fed us to lead us astray, to lead us astray, blinding us from the truth that leads to salvation. Satan can try as evidence in the book of Job, but it will never prevail against God's children. Satan is coming after your life because he sees the hand of God on you, on your life. He sees angels moving on your behalf in the spiritual and will stop at anything to disrupt God's plans on your life. Again, this is evident in Daniel 10, when the demon, demonic entity, Prince of Persia, restrained angel Gabriel when he tries to send God's message back to Daniel, hence the Daniel fasting. We are spiritual beings before we are physical. Everything occurs in the spiritual before it, become, before it comes to fruition in the physical. So when you're facing the toughest battles and you can't catch a break, Rest in this that God has your plans laid out for you. God has plans laid out for you. Angels are moving on your behalf and the accuser doesn't like that. As Psalms 91 stated, Even though you walk through the valley of shadow of death, you will fear no evil, for he is with you, your rod and your staff, it comforts you. He prepared the table before you in the presence of your enemy, he anoints your head with oil, your cup runner over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you, all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. In 2 Thessalonians 3, 3, but the Lord is faithful who shall, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. To combat the enemy, you need to get into the word, which is the Bible. Draw closer to God. Know his characteristic. Be his friend. Not solely rely on Sunday preachings from your pastors or my word read the bible and you have the desires and if you have the desires to read the bible but you find yourself struggling to commit go to god with your honesty and it will help you with it because god always wants to see your heart posture he wants to know how you truly feel he already knows it he just wants you to say it you know god looks at your heart posture the sincerity in your words and the heart if you've been gone and want to come back to god and accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, say these words. It's, God, forgive me for things I've done, knowingly or unknowingly. I want to come home to you. I miss you. I accept Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. And whatever the Spirit guides you, whatever else you feel like saying to God, 
if that means confessing all your sins, if that means just crying, because the Holy Spirit does understand what your cries are and would petition on your behalf. Jesus would petition on your, on your behalf to God because they see the inner beings, even the tears are prayers to God. So thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful day. Bye guys. <laughs>